Oh, hey there, everybody. Wendy Klinky with Blue Cats Studio. It is day 22 of the Advent Ornament Challenge. And today we're going to do the, um, what am I calling it? It's a, a silent night. Oh, it's not silent night, but it's like a quiet winter night. So we're going to begin with a lavender. It's a deco art Americana. It's a base coat, so we're not going to see a lot of it, but I do like how it just kind of sets the tone and kind of peeks through the background in a few places. Just get full coverage on the ornament. And what this also does is it helps kind of start to, to fill those wood grains so that it absorbs this paint instead of the next coat of paint. Because we do want to do a little bit of blending on surface. That just helps. Okay, so we're going to break out a pencil in just a second and hand sketch our little scene here. All right, I feel like that's a pretty good basic purple coating. I'm going to offload my... I'll load my brush so I don't have extra stuff on and we're going to go ahead and rinse it while we give this guy a little blast. Just want it more or less dry. That way we're not smudging paint with our pencil tip. Okay, squeezing the brush. I think we're done with the brush with this guy. I just used a big one so it would go it would go quickly. Oh, man, I'm like a klutz today. Okay, so let's begin. We're going to draw kind of we're going to think kind of think in terms of a diagonal so if the top is right here i guess you can see that right so here we go here's our center and that's on painter's tape so we don't have to worry about it i'm going to create kind of a a diagonal line that sort of comes down it's gonna be hard to see so let me just let me just kind of ink that in all right good you can see that and then we'll make kind of like a, narrow and then wide like so and then we'll do this guy here so what we're kind of creating we'll let those pieces sort of converge over there so what we're creating is kind of the concept of rolling hills hey holly i know more purple this one's maybe not going to be quite as purple as last night but boy once i got that purple out i was just i was feeling the purple Okay, so now that we've got this, these are rolling hills. And you know what? To be honest, I was really inspired by Van Gogh's Starry Night. This is not going to look anything like Van Gogh's Starry Night, but that was what I was feeling. So now I'm drawing a tall triangle for a Christmas tree. I used pencil so that I wouldn't mess it up because sometimes I do. I'm just going to kind of place that in. So now that you have your basic set up we kind of know where that tree is going to be we're going to work on the sky and then the, the hills and then we'll place the tree and then a few things on the hills and this, and all that good stuff okay so let's see here actually i guess we probably could use this guy we're going to mix the background so i'm going to grab some bright blue and that's my painter's tape blue technically it's called deco art uh, crisp blue but any kind of bright blue is going to do well hey there linda Wow, it's so fun when you join me each night or day or whatever time it is. All right, so crisp blue, a little blop of it over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of my, well, probably not the mermaid tail, sorry, some navy blue. That kind of dulls the blue out, makes it a little less bright. A little touch of white and maybe a pinch of my dioxazine purple. I know, I literally just took the whole, the whole color list, the whole playlist and smushed it together to kind of create an inky, inky sky color. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get that in here. And I can go mostly over my tree. I might, there we go. I wanna make sure I can still see my tree outline. I mean, I can always freehand it again, but sometimes when you get it right, you're like, I just wanna keep it right. So you go over the edges a little bit. I do still want, whoops, wrong paint. I'm just gonna kind of hit that blue in there. Just in a way, kind of scrub it into the surface. Okay, now lest you think that's it, we're gonna grab, let me see if I can do this with a bigger brush, I'm not sure. Just a kiss of the white. I'm gonna kind of work it on the palette a little bit. So I have very, very little paint. I'm gonna start to create kind of like a little glowing circle here. And I'm gonna allow that to radiate out. Yeah, you can see that. It's, Whoopsies, I better move my mouse. You know, one time I shut down half a stream yard that way and that wasn't good. Okay, here we go. 
So again, just white and put it started in the middle and then kind of radiating out, radiating out, creating a glow. I got a little bit streaky in there, so I'm gonna try and whoops work it a smidge with that brush. Okay, I think that'll do the trick. So now you've got this cool glow in the sky. Love that. I feel like my sky got a bit dark, but I think we can, we're going to pull it off anyways. We'll call that good. So we're going to give that a minute to, to dry. I don't know how much offloading I can do with that big brush because we use pretty much every every bit of spare, spare pigment that would come off. So now we're going to step down to a smaller brush. I'm really feeling good about these little tiny square brushes or flat brushes. I like them. Um, so we're gonna work with those. So let's let's do some more mixing. So let's see, we're gonna start, and we're gonna go dark purple, medium purple, light purple, just so that your, your head's kind of where I am. So I'm gonna take that guy there, the dioxazine. I'm gonna add a little bit of the bright blue to it just to kind of pop it up a bit. There we go. Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that electric-y, purpley blue. I love that. Mm -mm -mm. Looks really dark on camera, at least on my computer screen where I'm looking at the camera. But uh, mm, that is a pretty color. We're just going to kind of fill in that whole zone down there. So we say, all right, here's our line, and just kind of fill it in. And you can get you can get really creative with your hell shapes. You can do whatever you like. Everybody still saw it on camera? Yeah, okay, good. So again, you know, you want a little bit of continuity feeling like going through the tree, but leaving the tree blank just so it, just so I don't lose it, you know, because that happens. Okay, now I would like to blend this a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab just a tiny pinch of white on my brush. I like again. We do a lot of we 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 do a lot of paint kissing here, right? I'm gonna just sort of bring sort of in the lower portion, kind of drag it through that paint and allow it to blend upwards. There we are. I'm gonna grab a little bit more, just straight up dioxazine purple without the blue, and kind of line line that there and kind of start to blend it down. Okay. Bring it there and just kind of blend it on down. Okay. So for the most part, this purple that we that we did the base coat with, we're not really going to see. So that looks very, very dark. Let me see. It's not quite as dark as it looks for you guys, but um, it's 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 quite intense, which makes me happy. Okay. So now that we've got that one, I'm going to take a little bit of my lavender purple here. That was the lighter purple. Now, if you wanted to just mix your own and skip the lavender, you totally could. I'm just going to literally add it to that blue mix that we just created. And that should step us down a little bit from the prior one. And we'll come in here and get the middle one. And it's just a little bit bluer than the existing background. And I got a little tiny zone, which this brush isn't going to work for. So I'm going to... Rinse him off and grab something smaller. Where's oh, all my mermaid tails are over there in the brush brush drying rack because you know I was thinking this this afternoon. How you, how you guys doing? Getting ready for Christmas? Do you have all your presents bought and wrapped and all that stuff? My living room floor it looks like Santa's workshop right now. Got like a couple orders like getting. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> like, all right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that. I feel like it's lacking kind of, it's less, it, it's more interesting when we add a little white. Okay. So I just, uh, just literally added white, but I'm going to grab this brush that we were just using a second ago and kind of, let's kind of blend it a little bit. Let's see if we can drag a little tiny kissy kiss of white through, uh, through here. And again, I'm going to leave that white a little closer to the, to the to the border with the darker color and so these are such flexible uh, bristles that it's it's only sort of doing okay with the with the blending oh hey there carrie carrie popped on to say hello she and holly are some of my my, my inner circle members good to see you online carrie you were one of my purple fans too right 
I'm trying to remember. I feel like I was doing a project once and you told, oh, it was day one and you told me to add purple and I did. And I think that was you. Well, you and Cassie joined me at the same time. So every once in a while, I can't remember if it was the double R or the double S. All right, here we go. And I'm going to take the, I just, oh, here, I'm just blah, blah, doing my thing. I added some white to that purple that we just mixed. And I'm going to do the third layer here. And I guess I'm back to my big brush. And then we'll grab the little brush. Yep. Okay. Carrie's the one who loves purple. Well, good. Then two days in a row, we're hitting your we're hitting your sweet spot. Holly too. Holly's my cousin. She's my we call her my soul cousin because she's actually my former husband's cousin. Is this too much information, Holly? I totally just sometimes like to brag on you. But I got to keep Holly in the divorce. Ha ha. Anyway. All right, so now we've got that kind of basic. So now we kind of have these three stripes and you can still see sort of our triangle where the tree is going to be. And then like like before, adding a little bit of white kind of at the base there. And that's pretty harsh. So I'm going to come in and kind of blend it. And so we're hoping that this kind of looks like you have three distinct layers but they're not just plain stripes. They've got a little bit of nuance in them. Yeah, all right, well, you don't have to worry about what's under behind the tree because that's not gonna show, not so much. All right, so since we're here, I'm also going to add just a little bit of white to my brush and sort of drag it through that light purple we just mixed to create a lighter purple and drag a little bit of that across the upper portion of this hill. Maybe even a little bit more white. Let's see. I want it to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a glow. The reason we did the light on the lower portion of these other ones was just to ensure that we had really good uh, differentiation between the um, the lights and darks. All right, and just a little kiss. There we go. We're even thickening it a bit here, so it looks like the moonlight is going to be catching. All right, so I feel like our moon needs. Our moon needs a little bit more love. And sometimes you have to get your you have to get your all your other pieces in place to see that you don't have enough contrast or, or value difference. Um, plus when it dries, it tends to dry darker. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of the white and I'm gonna kind of work it in here. And that was the blue of the sky. Just coming back to revisit. So I've basically blended just a lighter blue. Oh, Carrie says she loved the one yesterday. And Polly says, I got the purple thing. So there's at least two of us. Yup, we got purple people here. So online paint night, folks, do we have any purple people over there either? All right, so there we go. We're starting in with a little bit of that lighter, that lighter blue. And I'm gonna kind of offload the brush on my palette and just, I should show you what I'm doing, not trying to do it off cam. And then I'm just gonna grab, take that paint kind of blend it in with a, a darker edge of the paint. You notice how I always work in portions so that I can kind of go back and leverage the pre-mixed colors or the colors that I've already mixed. And so I'm just using a sort of interim blue because we really want like a beautiful glow in the sky. And then we'll kind of blend along there. Come back into the light blue. Okay. Let's see, maybe my finger needs to do the job. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. I feel like now we've got a really nice glow. Oh, you know what I didn't put in the list? Y'all need to get a, a toothpick. You could probably use like the tip of a paint pen or something else, but I do love the toothpick. I feel like the toothpick does good stuff. So we haven't much used the mermaid tail and we've barely used the navy. So let's go ahead and grab the navy blue as is. And we're going to start to put that tree in place. So it's going to be kind of, you know, like a, a series of kind of upside down V's and just kind of brush strokes that kind of pop out. And it's okay if some of those colors, you know, from the background show a little bit. That's why we, that is in fact why we prime this thing purple. Because if you get little hints of purple peeking through, it just looks cool. Like, now this is very much like a dark on dark. I could also use a black, but sometimes I feel like black, sort of an absence of color and I feel like it's almost too stark. Like we kind of want, 
do want a little bit of um what's the word i'm looking for there's the word subtlety i guess i don't know okay oops there's a wet spot there so there we go now we've just kind of put a tree in place that was really really simple right it's just kind of like kind of placing you see that on camera? Just kind of placing like pieces back and forth, allowing bits to stick out, kind of just keeping it random. I'm going to give that a quick blow dry because it's, we've got some really chunky sections of paint there. I have to say, I'm proud of myself. Oh, it's like only nine o'clock at night, you know, I've been doing these things so late. I think I've managed to go live at least in the same day but sometimes i would like one time i went live at like 11 59 p.m <laughs> so it's not exactly early but it's a heck of a lot earlier than i've been <laughs> recently i'm trying guys next up i got like a five page research paper to write and i don't want to admit that i am very slow and getting started on it but whatever it's cool so we can you know we're going to do this just a little bit we're going to grab a smidge of the mermaid tail teal and if you don't have mermaid tail, go get some. It's amazing. Uh, sometimes Michael's has it, but Hobby Lobby always has it. And yeah, okay. So I'm just going to add little dabs of the teal kind of into the tree. Not too much. Whoops. Let's keep it light. Just kind of dabbed here and there, keeping kind of in the same motion that you just did with your tree shape. It just adds like a little kissy glow, just a little glow. So let's see here. There we go. Yeah, you can kind of see the green. Again, it's supposed to be subtle. It's not supposed to be in your face screaming teal. But it, I, I really, honestly, like I really love how that that particular navy blue, I well, can't really see, but the navy blue and the teal go so, so nicely together. Like they both have like that greenish tone to them. So I'm appreciating that. All right, now we got to go back to a small, a small brush because we need to add some, uh, uh, watch them hoagies. Oh, you know, what? I forgot. Never mind. We got to add some bushes. Let's add some bushes. So back to your fluffy brush. My bad. Sorry. I'm going to kind of mix a little bit of the mermaid tail and a little bit of the teal. So we have kind of something in between, Just sort of somewhere in the, in the middle. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of scrub my brush so that my, my bristles get all like splayed out. And we're going to add just kind of some little bits of kind of scrubby, scrubby. Actually, you know, what? I'm going to flatten them out. I want a little bit more control over my, where I place that kind of scrubby bushes, right? Kind of up here in the foreground. So it's almost like we're kind of in a wooded area or just stepping into a clearing. This is sort of like the last tree and set of bushes kind of in sight. And then maybe we'll add like a little bit of scrubby here. Then we're going to add a touch of something here and there to the, to the mountains or, or rolling hills or whatever these are. A little bit above the horizon line, a little bit kind of coming down and on the hills. And just kind of, just kind of a little bit. So that little bit of green there kind of helps sort of frame and create like a cradle for this, this vista and what will eventually be a moon. Let's see. So Linda says, you just got some mermaid tail last week. You bought five. You know what? You and I are related. I pretty much like always buy like a whole bunch of them. Cause like, you know, again, during the pandemic when all this stuff was like hard to find, I had this sort of sense of desperation. And so I'd like, Oh, they have that, that color. I haven't been able to find it forever. I'm going to buy like the whole stock. It's bad. That's like a little hoarder mentality there, but it makes sense, right? Because like when you need a color, you need a color and we use mermaid tail all the time. All right. Switching to white. So I, I'm, I'm ratting on myself about hoarder mentality. Not you, Linda. I promise. <laughs> okay. So I got some white on my brush and then I just like smushed a most of it off. So I have very little. And let's see, we're going to come in and just add a little couple of like snow kisses to those bushes to kind of highlight them again. Yeah, just little bits. I'd love to be like, oh, it's like happy little bushes and happy little trees. I'm not Bob Ross, but feeling a little Bob Ross right now since so much of his trick is, is well-placed brush strokes. So you see, 
Well, it's gotten a little muddy over here. We're, we'll figure out how to kind of bring that back. Um, but don't stress about it yet. We're going to trust the process. All right, I'm going to come in here and then do the same thing. Now, I hope you can see these are kind of light. So it's not like super thick white. It's kind of fluffy because I want the colors to show through. And then we're going to come back in and add some more distinct bits of white. And I really love that effect where you kind of have the lighter stuff, sort of the dusting, which is what we're doing now is we're dusting our tree. And then we're going to come back in and add sort of key clumps and bits that kind of draw the eye. And I feel like that kind of helps bring that sense of random and natural versus versus not random and natural, right? Okay. So, the, yeah, yeah, I kind of, you know, kind of create like a back and forth shape. This is a little bit stilted, but I don't know, stressing about it. Rinsing that brush. Now let's grab that toothpick. So my toothpick has seen the world like a lot. I'm going to come in here and grab, I'm just going to use a lot of white on it. I'm going to kind of start doing some dabbing on the tree. See if I can rotate that white so it's easier to get to. We're still all well centered. Yep, okay, good. All right. Hey, when I've got the cam all the cams so close and I can't see everything, sometimes I have to just double check to make sure that I'm not like painting off camera. I've I've, I've gone back and rewatched a few things so every so often, and I'm like, oh look, half the action you can't even see. Whoops. All right, so just kind of adding little bits of white on top. So that just gives you kind of like a nice, nice subtlety in those branches. I love my toothpicks. So I use these when I need like really tiny dots because like, you know, or like, cause the, ugh. sometimes, I mean, often we use like that, the tail of a brush, but sometimes the tail of the brush is just way too thick. And because we're working so small, you really need to be able to just get little itty bits in there. So this is how we get our little bitty it's itty bits in. And we'll do some of those on these bushes here to kind of help hopefully add a little bit of a little bit more structure and form to some of those slightly amorphous blobs. Yep, and we just kind of wiggly jiggle them kind of along. Can kind of work it in clumps. All right, I'm gonna. This is getting very clumpy, so I'm gonna just wipe it off and start fresh with my tip. Sometimes when a thing starts to collect a whole bunch of, of paint, I guess it doesn't really harm anything, but it becomes deceptive. You think you've got all this paint on your thing, and then you're like, why is it? Why is it not not dropping paint for me? And you realize it's above sort of the working surface. So do you see how now that looks like something that's, you know, these are like the shadow portions and then this stuff on the top is, um, oh, Cassie asked, what's the stick I'm using? So this is a skewer. I had like a whole package of them. They're kitchen skewers. I got them in, I don't know, on one of those like end point aisles in the grocery store. Um, yeah. You can also use a toothpick. Um, I think I also have some big skewers from the grocery store. Although this one has been, this one has also seen a whole lot of wars. So the tip is pretty blunted now. So I often use this to like unplug my, my squeeze bottles or whatever. But yeah, it's just a kitchen skewer bamboo. And I reuse it and reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. So it's not like you buy it once and throw it away. Just keep wiping it off and you're good to go. All right. So I'm feeling pretty good about sort of all those bushes. It's still a little funky here, but meh, we're not going to worry about it. Okay, let's get a moon in. So kind of right in the center there, let's just start with like, we're going to do a crescent moon. I could use a brush, but I think I can also kind of drag the paint around with my skewer. And probably maintain pretty decent control. Oop, it's gotten awfully round and kind of caricatured, but that's okay. It still, still mostly works. Let's see if I can get a better point on that guy. Now we can add some stars. These are going to come in, or maybe it's snow. I don't really know. 
And the beauty of this one is, you know, you can kind of dab it a, a, a handful of times and you're going to get like some big dots and some little dots. You notice how some of these, I kind of group them together. Some of them I spread out. So my initial thought was that it was going to be stars. So again, you have big ones and little ones. But if you feel like it looks like snow, well, you can make it into snow. If you want it to be snow falling, you want to bring it all the way down so that it's landing, you know, on the hills. I think that's the differentiator. That's my clue that it's maybe stars. And again, trying to keep it sort of spread out and varied in terms of size. And so if you're doing that and you want it to be stars, there's one place you never put a star and that's going to be right here in the middle of the moon because that's a kind of a kind of an impossibility. Cuz there's actually a planet there, right? Right. Okay, good. Glad we got clear on that. But I can do a few stars around it. All right, I feel like I've now saturated my sky. But there you have it. So I kind of was just messing around with this idea. And then I was like, man, it just reminds me of like a quiet evening. Like my brain can kind of hear like the wind blowing through the, through the trees or just over the plains or whatever. So I think that, oh, you know, I said we were going to do gold. So you have the option. You can leave it like this. And frankly, I'm now feeling like I want to leave it like this. Um, but if you wanted to dab, dab a few like gold ornaments in the tree or a gold star on top, you can. I did a mock-up of that. Oh, I can't reach it. Not without knocking everything over. But you know what? I like this now. So I'm changing my mind. No gold. So I always try to get some kind of a metallic or glitter in here. If you're feeling it, you can totally add glitter. Places I would recommend glitter would be little, little bits on the bushes and the tree. But last night we used like a cool iridescent stuff. This is neat. This Duraclear iridescent varnish from DecoArt. Again, I mostly talk about DecoArt stuff because it's affordable and it's pretty decent quality. Um, this stuff gives a really cool sheen. It, is it showing on this guy? You can kind of see it like on the trees and stuff and the doors of the chapel. And there's already a beautiful purple but it just sort of augments the existing purple. So that's something that could be done. I think I've got a greenish tinge of this as well, which might be interesting on the sky. Um, so I don't know. While we're here, I'm going to go ahead and do the, do the finish the gold part there, and then we'll call it good. So again, I'm going to leave it up to you how you want to glitterify it or sparkleify it if you even decide that that's necessary. And where's a brush? Here it is. And of course, you all know, ask me questions. A little bit second more of the stuff there. Here we go. These are such fun little vignettes, you know, we just to kind of just kind of pop them out there. Have a good time. It takes 30 minutes and then call it a day. Oh, see, and Linda says, my snow kisses and dusting doesn't come out like yours. Is it coming out too too gloppy or how's it, what, what kind of results are you seeing, Linda? Talk to me, Goose. One of the, um, so if we're going to talk about like snow dusting and kisses. Well, here, I'll move this guy off to the side so we can kind of still see it. Um, So I usually have to, to get my dusting and kisses. I have to kind of make sure that the, the bristles are like really splayed out so that it kind of gives me a broken, a broken, a broken line. So it's almost like dry brushing. You're not a good blender. Blending is hard, hard work. So I usually, I mean, I don't know if you, you noticed that, but when I was working on this guy, I had to do a couple of passes, especially on the blending around here. I mean, because what I ended up with was very like stark borders between the colors. And so it just meant that I had to say, okay, if this is my main color and this is my, my other main color, I have to create a little bit wider spectrum between the two um, and continue to kind of modulate 
now this is dry, so I, I, I'm kind of done with blending with this guy for the day. But so for example, if I'm using, let me see, I gotta find a piece of paper or something. No, not that. Let's grab something out of the printer here. If I wanna improve my blending, I can kind of take the blue like so, and then I can come in with some white. That's all wet, right? The minute your stuff dries, you kind of get a whole different animal. And then just keep adding white. Okay, so somebody's asking, where did I get the ornaments? Uh, these particular ones I got at Michael's, ten bucks for like 50 of them. However, um, you can still get them on Amazon and it's like 50, or excuse me, 10 bucks for like 60 of them and they're three and a half inch diameter. Um, I can certainly post the link. I know a few folks have, have used it to purchase them. By the way, I do not receive compensation um, for posting that link. I'm just putting it there so that you guys can do this and join me. All right, so I don't know if you're seeing that or not, Linda, but I have to keep kind of adding little bits of white and blue to this to get the blend right. But it does take practice, and it's a little easier when you're doing, in say, a straight line versus a um, versus versus a circle. But even so, you know, if you're doing it in a circle, you know, depending on what colors you're working with, you can start on the outside with the blue, kind of like so. You see how it now gets broken, so there's way less pigment there. I can then come in with a white in the middle and kind of slowly blend outwards. And again, it's not perfect and I have to tweak it. So coming back. Now, if this was really big, you could, there's, you know, it's sometimes easier to, to get a good transition, but when you're working so small, it does take time to kind of work it. So Linda says, yes, totally on that blending technique and working on gently touching with color. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there really is a level of finesse that, that takes time to develop. Like I just added too much paint there, but I wanted to lighten it up a little bit more. And so, you know, if it ends up being all too light and then you feel like, okay, I need to bring a little bit more blue back in, just grabbing that extra and kind of, so now I have a harsh line there. Come back in, grab a tiny, tiny bit of white, and just kind of, I don't know. It, it takes time. It really, really does. So hopefully that helps. Anyways, um, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to go write my paper now. I will see you guys tomorrow for day 23. Holy moly. We like kicking butt and taking names and creating some really amazing ornaments. So again, you know, if you're just tuning in now and uh, you want to paint this, just pause when I turn this off and then you can catch the replay. And I'm also catching a time lapse so that you can see the whole thing in like 20 seconds. All right, guys, have a great night. Thank you for joining me. Bye, Cassie. Bye, Linda. Bye, Holly. Bye, everybody else who I don't see. Bye, Carrie. All right. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Kicking my stuff.